Hey there, it's Hana, and welcome to the channel where I make pixel art game assets for beginners. In this video, we'll be making some pumpkins to celebrate spooky season. I'll also be doing a little challenge where I try to shrink the pumpkin as small as possible. So stay tuned and see how you might go about doing the same thing. First, I want to change my grid to a 32x32. 32 32. Naturally, pumpkins aren't very rounded. In fact, they are flattened at the top and the bottom. You can even imagine that the typical pumpkin is like a squished down ball with a stem on top. But if you're looking for something that is a bit more odd looking, you can try out some different shapes. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going with the typical one. So from our circle, which you can create by using the ellipse tool, shift view if you're more into shortcuts, you can select the entire 32x32 32 32 tile and squish it down from the top. When you squish it down, some of the lines here are going to get cut off. So just make sure to line them back after. Then from there, just color the whole area. We're doing this pumpkin from a top-down perspective, which is why I'm making this top part lighter. Okay, here's how I think about top-down. There are two elements that make up this cell top and down. Top is the top part and well, down is pretty much everything down below it. Shading in top down relies on these two elements. If you have a light source shining from above, the top part will become the highlight and the rest will become the shadow. But if you have a light source from below, this will be reversed, which now means that everything below will be highlighted and everything on top will be within the shadow area. Either way of shading should showcase these two elements. So if you run into some issues with top-down perspective, specifically with shadings, this could be something you want to check for. <laughs> alright, alright, but you know, low-key though, did that spooky though? Anyways, back to the video. In this drawing, I'm giving it two of its signature elements. The lighter part represents the top and the shadow part represents everything below it. In the middle of the top surface, I'll indent it a bit to make room for the stem. From there, I'll add four lines going from the stem down to the bottom. These will be the pumpkin ribs. Remember when I said as you move towards the center line, the curves becomes less significant? Well, that also applies in this case. If you're looking at the curved line from a direct angle, it will look like a straight line. But if you look at it from a side angle, it will look like a curved line. Anything in between would have a curved angle that is less than the side and more than the front. I'm doing four ribs, just because I kind of want each of these sections to be kind of thick. These ribs part are where the pumpkin sinks into itself. So what I'm going to do is to turn this line here into a curve. So as our eyes trail that line, you can see that they all sink in at the ribs. And it creates the effect that we're looking for. Now I'm adding a bit more highlight to the pumpkin. These parts around the stem would be the highest point. That's why it receives a bit more light. So I'm taking a lighter color and placing it around that area, still maintaining that curve. I'm also just cleaning up the lines above. Then I'll add an outline using the darkest color and I'll also use that color to work on the stem for more emphasis. At this point, I feel like the shadow colors are a bit too dark, so I went back to the previous color palette and took the color in between. I then fill the bottom area here with that new shadow color. If you want to blend between these two colors, you can add a few loose strokes. The technique is basically dithered shading, which allows you to blend between the two colors by placing them next to one another in a pattern. Usually it would be in a checkered pattern. If you want to add more colors to your palette, you can add some back lighting. This means that aside from the main source of light, you would have another dimmer light source in the opposite corner. This usually makes the object fuller and the colors a bit more vibrant. The idea is that if you put a color that is slightly contrasting to the main color theme, it will boost the vibrancy of those colors. So that's why I'm adding a pink color, which doesn't deviate much from the main color theme but has a blue tint to it which makes the orange part feel warmer. Normally, I would add it to one part of the shadow to make it look less like a flat surface. 
I try to mess around, adding textures to the pumpkin. Like here, between the shadows and the highlights, I added a thin line of the darker shadow to put more emphasis on the ribs. Taking the same color, I darkened the shadow on the two side sections to make the middle section lighter, which in turn makes it look pop out from the drawing. So as you draw your own pumpkin, you're gonna feel like adding your personal touch to the piece. This could be some strokes you find unique or just the way you place your shadings. Basically, there's a lot of ways to make that pumpkin look like your own. So just look at your painting, see what you like the most about a detail and play around with it. I guess that would be a good start. Moving on, I'll give this pumpkin a simple stem. I like the blue stem color because it has a spooky off-color vibe of Halloween. Then I'll finish off by adding a super light glossy pattern to the top. This will make it look a bit more cartoonish. And yeah, that's basically it. We just finished making a 32 by 32 pumpkin. To celebrate spooky season, I figured I would do a fun little challenge. From this 32 by 32 pumpkin, I'll try to half the size until it no longer looks like a pumpkin. So going back, what makes a pumpkin a pumpkin? Is it the orange color? Is it the ribs? As we go smaller, we gotta be more selective about what kind of details we want to put in the pumpkin, since there's not much space to work with. Maybe you want to prioritize the color, or maybe you want to highlight a certain feature like the pumpkin ribs or the stem. Whatever it is that you choose, make sure it encapsulates what screams pumpkin to you. With that in mind, let's go shrink some pumpkins. 16 is a bit smaller, but it's not that much of a difference from the 32 by 32. I start off by highlighting the top part while also sectioning it into four parts. The four ribs going down on the side are connected by a stem up top. Compared to the 32 by 32, this has much less detail. Like the curve now only curves in by one pixel at the top instead of slowly going into a slope. So I guess that's the first noticeable difference from the 32 by 32. I'll make the color of the bottom a bit lighter as well. Then I added an outline right away. In the 16 by 16, I can still do dithering, though it's only for about one or two pixels. At the bottom, I'll add some pink light. Then we'll finish off by giving it a stem. Nice! That looks like a tiny version of the first pumpkin. All right, now let's move on to the next size, which is an eight by eight pixel pumpkin. I'm trying to follow the same step as the previous pumpkins. I feel like the 8x8 would have details that are more symmetrical than the previous one. At this point, the ribs are just lines. The only part that might suggest a curve is probably the silhouette or the outline and the stem right here. Other than that, there's little room to work with. I'm adding in an outline for the pumpkin, maybe a square shape, I'm not sure. Then some pink shadows here and there. I thought I might be able to replicate what I did with the previous pumpkin by extending the middle part down, but then it looks kind of weird, so I go back to the original shape. I don't know why I was trying to turn it into a square, but I'm just testing. This is, this is so small, oh my god. I mean... This way it looks more like a tangerine, but hopefully the ribs in the middle stands out enough to make it look like a pumpkin. Okay, so I think I'll do it like this. First, I'll give the top right a bit of a highlight, which makes this area on the left within the shadow area. So now, I can make the ribs on the left a bit darker. This way it makes it so that the ribs look a bit more defined without having too much line art within a small object. And then I'll add a stem, quite big for this pumpkin. But it looks cute though. Oh god, I don't know if it can get any smaller than this. A circle, and then an outline, and then a dot of highlight. Maybe I'll turn this top part into a stem, probably too square. Let's go back to the circle shape. And then I'll probably just add a backlit color to one of the side and then and then call it 
<laughs> and they call it a pumpkin. All right, yeah, I think that's as small as it could get. I mean, going two by two is probably just taking the middle part of the four by four and calling it a pumpkin. So yeah, four by four is probably as small as it can get. Like, I wouldn't say it's recognizable as a pumpkin, but if you put it next to other pumpkins, then yeah, maybe you can just hide it somewhere. It's like part of the illusion. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess 4x4. That was fun. And until the next video, stay tuned!